our recent focus has been on reactions at the benzylic position. That is the position that I'm highlighting here that is adjacent to the aromatic ring. In this video, what we are going to focus on are free radical halogenation reactions at this particular position. We have an example reaction and product shown of this reaction here on the screen, and I'm going to highlight a few features of this reaction before we go into some examples and look at the mechanism for this reaction. So in the free radical halogenation reaction, what is going to be the case is that this free, that the benzylic position is particularly prone to forming free radicals. We will explain why this is particularly prone to forming carbon radicals at this position. I'm reading the carbon radical as a carbon with a dot there. We'll show why it's prone to forming carbon radicals when we get into the mechanism of this. But the fact that that particular position is especially prone to forming radicals more so than the tertiary carbon over here or any of the other carbons in the molecule is going to cause this particular spot to be a prime site for free radical halogenation. And if we think way back to when we learned about free radical halogenation of alkyl halides, we talked about how that reaction requires light and heat. So I'm going to put a star on this as a reminder that you will see light and heat in the reaction mixture if free radical halogenation is the route that things are going to go because the light and heat is going to promote the formation of the necessary radicals. It provides the energy required specifically for breaking the chlorine-chlorine bond in the initial step of the mechanism to create chlorine radicals that are required to initiate the process and get things underway. And so the reason why I mention this necessity of light and heat here is that a common mistake that people make with these reactions, they see the aromatic ring and they're trained to think electrophilic aromatic substitution. And then they look and see the chlorine and they say, oh, I'm going to replace one of the hydrogens on the ring with chlorine. That will only be the case if there is the iron catalyst present. So if there's an iron catalyst present, then do electrophilic aromatic substitution. If instead there's light and heat, that's going to instead promote free radical reactions in occurring. So look at what is actually available in the reaction mixture along with the chlorine, and that's going to tell you whether to do free radical halogenation at the benzylic position or whether you need to do electrophilic aromatic substitution and replace one of the hydrogens on the aromatic ring with a chlorine atom. Iron is going to favor the electrophilic aromatic substitution. Light and heat is going to favor this free radical reaction at the benzylic position. So let's take a mechanism, look at the mechanism so that we can understand why it is this benzylic position that is prone to react. So taking a look at the free radical halogenation mechanism, this is in many ways going to be a throwback to the mechanisms that you have learned previously for free radical halogenation, where we are going to start with our aromatic molecule in this particular case. We'll react with chlorine in the presence of light and heat, and we're going to ask how we get to the final product of this reaction of isobutyl benzene with chlorine and light and heat. So first step of the mechanism, anytime we have a free radical halogenation, is what we refer to as initiation. That is the step where due to the fact that there is light and heat present, the weak bond that links the two chlorine atoms together is going to break. So we will show that happening like so, using my electron pushing arrow. Keep in mind the halogenation free radical reaction differs from the majority of reactions that we learn in that we use single arrows here to indicate the movement of one electron. The electrons are not moving in pairs. Instead, that light and heat and free radical mechanism results in homolytic bond breakage where both of the two chlorine atoms get the same number of electrons in this homolytic, homo meaning same, breakage of the bond. So we take one electron over to the chlorine on the left, one to the chlorine on the right, and that is going to result in two chlorine radicals. Now these chlorine radicals are going to be quite reactive because of the fact that they have that unpaired electron and they no longer have a complete octet. And so due to the fact that those are quite high energy, quite reactive, 
what is going to happen next in what we refer to as one of the propagation phases of our reaction mechanism is that the chlorine radical is eager to react with something. And so we ask, well, what is available in the reaction mixture for that chlorine radical to react with? Well, in the container, we have the isobutyl benzene. And so what's going to happen is that the chlorine radical is going to come in and it is going to result in the breakage of one of the carbon hydrogen bonds within this alkyl substituted aromatic ring. And specifically, the one that is going to be targeted for breakage is going to be one of the carbon hydrogen bonds at the benzylic position. So here at this step, what we are specifically going to target is that the chlorine radical attacks or forces the breakage of a carbon hydrogen bond at the benzylic position. The reason the benzylic position is the targeted spot here is by breaking the bond at that benzylic position, we are going to yield a more stable radical carbon intermediate than would be the case at any other spot in the molecule. So we're trying to keep the energy of the system here as low as possible. So we bring the chlorine radical over, single headed arrow, it's gonna team up with one electron from that carbon hydrogen bond there at the benzylic position. The other electron from that position is gonna come down onto the carbon right here. And that carbon landing there is going to result in the formation of our organic intermediate here. And so I'll go ahead and fill that in like so radical right there. Our other product of this step would be the HCl. So I'll just write in HCl here as a reminder that that has formed as well from this reaction. And then why is it that this benzylic position is where we favor forming the radical? The reason we favor forming the radical here rather than over at this tertiary carbon or elsewhere in the molecule is because this will be stabilized by resonance from the aromatic ring. So we can show additional resonance structures here if we like to illustrate that. For example, we could take the, lone the unpaired electron here, bring it over, team it up with one electron from that pi bond. The other electron from the pi bond comes over to here. And that would give us one of our possible resonance structures. So one of our possible resonance structures would correspond to a carbon carbon double bond right here. I'll put the hydrogen in, we don't have to show it. It's implied that it's there, but since I started drawing it in the original structure, I'll continue. And then our unpaired electron radical would be right here. We could continue to do this around the ring by bringing the pi bond from here, taking one of the electrons over from there and teaming it up with the unpaired electron to move the radical over to here and so on. There are a couple of other possibilities here. So I'm just gonna put et cetera to indicate that there would be additional possible resonance structures here that we could draw. Illustrating that the radical is delocalized. It is shared over multiple carbon atoms and that is going to help stabilize that radical. Now, ultimately, what we have learned through the course of the last couple of chapters is that aromaticity confers a great amount of stability in molecules. And so as a result of that fact that aromaticity confers a huge amount of stability in the molecule, this radical is the most favorable radical of the resonance structures. And so as a result, ultimately the product that we create from the reaction is going to correspond exclusively to maintaining the aromaticity. So even though we have these multiple resonance structures that account for why the formation of the radical is most favored at the benzylic position, the final product is going to have the aromaticity restored there. So let's go ahead into step three now. Step three we'll describe as another propagation step. And in this propagation step, what I'm gonna do is take that most favorable resonance stabilized intermediate from our last step I'm gonna just redraw that here. Doesn't matter where I put the bonds in the aromatic ring as long as they're conjugated. Show my hydrogen there just because we did in the last step. It's not required, but 
showing it anyway. And now that we have that carbon radical, the carbon radical is highly reactive. And so it is going to be searching around the reaction flask for whatever it can react with. And it's quite reactive. So what is it statistically most likely to come into contact with when the reaction container is full of chlorine and our alkyl benzene is it's going to be favorable to come into contact with another molecule of chlorine Cl2. And that bond between the two chlorine atoms is super duper weak as we learned in the initiation step. And so it is going to be subject to reaction with the carbon radical. Carbon radical is going to force the chlorine bond to break homolytically. One of those chlorine atoms is going to come over with one of the electrons from the covalent bond that I'm highlighting here to team up with the unpaired electron and create a carbon chlorine bond. So let's go ahead and show that product. So we'll create our aromatic ring here. And we are going to go ahead and form that bond to chlorine right here. I'll go ahead and show the hydrogen since I've been doing it all along. I might as well keep doing it like so. And so we have replaced one of the hydrogen atoms from our initial starting structure with the chlorine atom on our final product. The other product of this particular step would be chlorine radical because that other chlorine atom from Cl2 right here had to go somewhere. That somewhere is just a chlorine radical here. And we refer to this as a propagation step because the chlorine radical product that we just created is set up to come back and re-enter the mechanism at step two to create a cycle here where steps two and three will propagate. So even if in the container literally one molecule of Cl2 initially goes through this initiation step with light and heat to make a chlorine radical, that's all that's necessary. From there on, steps two and three will self-propagate until there is a limitation of the amount of alkyl benzene or the amount of chlorine in the container. These two steps, steps two and three, will cycle through onward around and around and around because of the fact that step three generates that radical that is needed by step two. So they can repeat over and over and over again. And so the take home message from this, other than the mechanism and being able to justify why it is that the benzylic position is the reactive position, is that we need to be able to recognize that if we react a alkyl substituted aromatic ring with chlorine and light and heat, we're going to get this benzylic substitution going on of one of the hydrogen atoms at the benzylic position with a halogen. And the typical halogens that are involved here are chlorine and bromine. You could see either one, both will be effective in this reaction. So let's apply what we've learned toward solving a synthesis problem where we are asking this problem to synthesize one chlorobutyl benzene from benzene. So we are asking here how to go from, and I'm going to sketch this out here to visualize it, benzene, question mark for whatever we need to fill in there, to one chlorobutyl benzene. So the fact that we have the full chlorobutyl group in parentheses indicates that this is all part of a single branch. So we will have one branch coming off of benzene, and that one branch, since we're calling it butyl, means that it needs to have four carbons in total. So I'm going to draw out a four carbon chain here. One, two, three, four. And at the position one, we need a chlorine atom. We start counting from the parent group, where the parent group would be the aromatic ring. So right here would be the one position off of that. And we know that this is all attached here to the butyl group because of the fact that it's all in the same parenthesis. So how do we go about creating that from benzene? So thinking backwards one step at a time is how we are going to go about doing this, much like how we've gone about doing some of the synthesis problems in the earlier videos. So taking one step back, we ask, how can we go about in one step making this chlorine substituted product? So the way that I know how to do that based on what we just learned is to react chlorine and our light and heat with a molecule that has a four carbon alkyl group. So take butyl benzene. If we react butyl benzene, with chlorine, light, and heat, that is going to replace the benzylic hydrogen that I'm highlighting right here with a chlorine atom. 
So there we are at that spot, working backwards in the synthesis. Continuing this retrosynthetic approach, we have to ask how to go from here backwards to something else. And you might be tempted to say to yourself, okay, can I take benzene here, do a Friedel-Crafts alkylation and attach that four carbon chain? The problem with that approach is this is a primary carbon right here. And so you wouldn't be able to do that reaction without getting a carbocation rearrangement to actually create the wrong constitutional isomer product. You would have a rearrangement go on there. So we can't do that. So like, how do we go from something to this alkyl group? Well, how about our Wolf-Kishner reduction or the Clemenson reduction? And I'm just gonna use the Wolf-Kishner here. Clemenson would work in this situation as well. So I go with the Wolf-Kishner reduction and the starting material for that would have to be a molecule that has a four carbon chain here with a carbonyl group directly attached to the aromatic ring. And then from there, thinking backwards, we're like, okay, how can we go a step backwards from there? Well, we learned about the Friedel-Crafts acylation reaction as a way of attaching a ketone group to an aromatic molecule by reacting with the corresponding acyl halide. And so our corresponding acyl halide here, we put in a chlorine, directly attach it to our carbonyl. We have a four carbon group in total, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Bring in the aluminum chloride as our catalyst, AlCl3 and that would give us our Friedel-Crafts acylation reaction, no rearrangements observed. So our three-step reaction series to go from benzene all the way to our targeted chlorine substituted product would go like so. And this is certainly not likely the only way to go about creating this final product, but it's one possible relatively short route to go about doing it in three steps. And this reaction highlights to us the value of that benzylic free radical halogenation reaction in attaching a halogen at the benzylic group.